The only thing I'm going to say is, ladies and gentlemen, please rise to your feet as I present Keisha Lance Bottoms, my successor, the 60th mayor of the city of Atlanta. That, of course, was Atlanta Mayor Kasim Reed uh, bringing out Keisha Lance Bottoms, Councilwoman Keisha Lance Bottoms, declaring a hard-fought victory against Councilwoman Mary Norwood. With all of the city's precincts reporting, Bottoms is leading by 759 votes. Here's what she told supporters late last night. At the beginning of this campaign, we talked about how this was a city where impossible dreams could take form. And I stand here today knowing that there are possibilities that are still taking form each and every day in this city. We started this campaign more than 12 months ago, and after talking to thousands of voters across this city, you all decided that our campaign was the one that you should support. But Councilwoman Mary Norwood is not conceding. She is asking for a recount. I will tell you right now, in the general, I went home. In this election tonight, I ain't leaving. We're going to be here. We will be here until every vote is counted and we know what happens. Let's go. Uh, joining us via FaceTime from Atlanta is Ernie Suggs, race and culture reporter with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Uh, Ernie, uh, what was turnout hey, morning, like morning, in Russell. this election? Uh, we got about 90, 92,000 votes in total, but it was only about 17%, 23% in Fulton County, 17% in DeKalb, or those numbers were kind of reversed. So turnout wasn't great, but turnout, that's kind of consistent with what um, Atlanta mayoral votes uh, turnout has been. So it wasn't anything different in terms of what we saw in 2008. So it was pretty pretty consistent. Uh, as you said, you know, Keisha won by 750, um, yeah, 759 votes. Uh, Mary is calling for a runoff. I mean, Mary is calling for a uh, recount, which is an automatic recount. This is only 1% of the vote. So uh, we have tomorrow, she's looking at provisional votes, uh, military votes, and absentee ballots to see if those can be counted and tallied up in her favor. But uh, it looks like a pretty, um, pretty tough hurdle to, to, to climb right now. Um, now, when we talked to you yesterday, yes. and I talked to folks uh, on the, on the last Bottoms campaign, Mm -hmm. Recent polling had Norwood up six. Yeah, she was up really high. How did, how did this thing change? I think over the last couple of days, I think people, especially on social media, were really, really talking a lot about the fact of losing the city. You know, there was this, there was this whole racial issue going on. A lot of African-Americans were saying, hey, look, a lot of people are going against Keisha. Why? You know, why is Caesar Mitchell and Shirley Franklin and, you know, all those high-profile black politicians um, endorsing Mary Norwood. A lot of people felt that it was because they did not like Kasim Reed, who is a backer, and as you saw in your clip, who's a backer of uh, Keisha. And people said, hey, you know, look, you know, this is our city. We saw what happened in the presidential election when um, Trump was elected. Uh, you know, Mary Norwood, she runs as an independent, but a lot of people have accused her of being a, uh, a Republican. Uh, and if you look at the splits, you know, this, the, the vote was split halfway. You know, the northern part of the city voted for Mary Norwood. The southern part, which is mostly African-American, voted for Keisha. So it, there is a split. Keisha acknowledged it last night in her speech that she has some work to do to unite the city. But I think that at the last minute, people saw and people felt that they needed to uh, maintain this 44 years of black leadership in the city. And they saw Keisha as that uh, vehicle. You talked about uh, social media. I saw the last um, 48 hours, a ton of black celebrities in Atlanta uh, yes. pushing messaging on Twitter, on Instagram. Yeah, Kamala Harris is here this weekend. Cory Booker was here. Tyrese was on stage last night for some reason. So a lot of black celebrities were coming out saying, hey, you know, we need to support Keisha. Uh, she had a lot of support from the state Democratic Party. Uh, which, again, was pushing that narrative that Mary Norwood was a Republican. So, you know, at the last minute, you know, those last two days, you know, you, every vote counts, as you know, especially well, in an well, election that, like this. And, and that's the thing. You absolutely, every vote counts. Ernie Suggs, hold on one second. Joining us right sure. now uh, is Atlanta Mayor-elect uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms. First and foremost, uh, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. 
Um, what jumps out, obviously, Mary Norwood is asking for a recount. I'm going to ask you what I just asked Ernie Suggs. He had polling data uh, showing her up by six points. I even had talked to folks on your campaign showing internal polling numbers had her up as well. What do you think made the difference? Uh, was it was it a strong ground game? What was it that got folks out to the polls that put you over the top? I was actually grateful when she went up by six points because my biggest fear was that people would get apathetic and think that we had the election they didn't need to come out. So I think that when she went up by six points, it was a wake-up call, and then you really had this national rallying cry around Atlanta, you know, asking what in the world are you all thinking in it? I think we lost uh, – connection. there we go. Go ahead. Amazing. Um, I would, so obviously you're now going into uh, going to a recount. What is your process, though? Uh, are you you declared victory? Uh, are you operating like uh, candidates do, and that is they begin the process uh, of a transition? Uh, and you, so you, will you do that and allow the recount to play itself out at the same time? Yes, and we had a recount in 2009 when uh, Mayor Kasim Reed and Mary Norwood were in the same position. So I don't think that anything will change. I think that if she really is interested in what's best for the city, she will go ahead and concede and let us move on with the transition full speed ahead. But, I mean, as the numbers are firm, in our opinion, the provisional ballots, we do believe, will break in our favor. And so we are just going to push on and get ready for the transition in January. How do you um, bring a city back together, whether we want to own up to it or not? You had an election uh, where, where race played a role in terms of you had even white Democrats uh, based upon polling data breaking for uh, breaking for Mary Norwood, uh, who I had Sir Michael Singleton on here who said he's known her for years and she is undoubtedly a, a Republican. Uh, then, of course, you had, you had African Americans who were angry uh, with Mayor Kasim Reed, who said too much time was being spent on development and not uh, for the folks uh, with, 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 uh, with the least of things. And so what is your strategy uh, to bring Atlanta together as one city to move forward? I think, Roland, the conversations that we've been having in the barbershop and around the kitchen table really bubble to the surface. And so I think it's important, one, that we're having the conversation openly, and then we can really begin to address the issue. So affordability issue is a huge issue in the city of Atlanta. And you heard a lot of angry voices. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. We saw people on the north side consolidate very quickly around one candidate. And on the south side, we were still splintered. But at the end of the day, everybody's talking about the same thing in, in Atlanta. We're talking about criminal justice reform, traffic, affordability, education, all the things that matter to people. And that transcends race. So I just look forward to leaving the city. And our mantra has been keeping the progress and making sure we're not leaving our communities behind. And that's going to be our focus. Well, I know you have a busy morning, uh, other interviews to do uh, all across the city. We surely thank you for joining us here on TV One's News One Now. Well, thank you for bringing attention to Atlanta. It really made a difference. I appreciate you. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, thank er, you. Uh, Ernie Suggs, I appreciate it as well. Thanks a lot. Sorry uh, thank you, that, that the mayor let cut into your time. Uh, hey, but that's, you, she's, the, she's the mayor elect, so um, <laughs> <laughs> I do what I'm told. Well, you, well, you know, Alpha Man wasn't going to short you. I appreciate it, my <laughs> yeah. brother. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, sorry, Ray, being a Sigma, you don't get that shout out. <laughs> All right, Ernie, thanks a lot. Uh, first of all, so uh, we'll do this here. Um, I'm going to go to a commercial break, and I'm going to come back and talk to my panel about the mayoral race. All right, y'all, welcome back to News 1 Now. We'll keep talking about the Atlanta mayoral race. Uh, so I'll stop this little mega down there, uh, Derek. Uh, you know, don't forget, your, your daddy's founder's day, birthday was on Monday. That's December right. 4th. I will go. I will so, right. your father. I'll we appreciate just said, put a little right. colors. Yeah, well, Alpha, first of all, you, you Alpha can show y'all how to do it. So anyway, so let's let's talk about, and of course, little Sigma going to be real quiet. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about the Atlanta mayoral race. This is what, this is what uh, I, I, is critical. I mean, we had, uh, we talked about it on this race, on this, on this show, and here was the deal. Mayor Norwood wouldn't come on this show. Mm -hmm. That ain't wise. This is a perfect example. Right. Bottoms wins by 769 votes. If anybody out there who says every vote don't matter, you have lost your mind. That's right. That's right. And I agree with that. The turnout was it shouldn't have been as it should have been higher than what it was.
But at Reach America, we always talk about, you know, it's not about Democrat or Republican. It's about what's right for this country. Keisha's right for Atlanta. And I say that because I looked at her, what she, you know, her credentials, you know, she's also a Delta, you know, sister of Omega Psi Phi. Oh, they came okay. out of here either, right? <laughs> okay, okay. But uh, I, I think, again, like I said, she's right for the city. I think they do need to, uh, they're divided right now because of this race. And I think Keisha, more so than Norwood, could be, you know, better in terms of uniting the city. But Greg, let's right. just cut let's cut to the chase. At the end of the day, again, we have to deal with the reality of black power. And that is, uh, and I use the stat all the time, Robert Holmes' books, his biography on Maynard Jackson. Prior to Maynard Jackson's election, African Americans were getting point zero zero one two percent of all city contracts. That was in 1973. That means that for every hundred dollars that all black people got were 12 cents. You've seen uh, in terms of black middle class, black entrepreneurs, black businesses blow up. But you have folks in Atlanta who are saying, yeah, but those folks who are not black entrepreneurs, who are not uh, in the middle upper class, have gotten left behind. Uh, that, that, that is what led to this schism. That's what, that is what has been driving this deal. And so uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms has a serious issue that she has to confront on how to let f those folks in Atlanta know you are still part of uh, the, the, the resurgent, if you will, Atlanta. Absolutely. Well, first of all, congratulations on having probably the first national interview with the mayor elect. And uh, she survived the uh, Kasim Reed referendum. Mm -hmm. uh, she expanded his margin of victory sure. over Mary Norwood by 40 votes because, you know, he beat her. Uh, Norwood got beat only by uh, a few less votes in the last one. But Keisha Lance Bottoms has a, has a chance, I believe. I agree with you, Derek. Uh, you mentioned Maynard Jackson, Roland, of perhaps being the best mayor Atlanta has had right. since him if she can break with Kasim Reed, who did very little for the South Side. I mean, you know, you had people endorse Mary Norwood, but those black folks at the end of the day chose race. And if Keisha Lance Bottoms can define herself as an independent mayor and address those concerns of economic underdevelopment and get away from these billion dollar stadiums and start dealing with that, she can break with Kasim Reed for good. But make no mistake about it, yesterday's election was about Kasim Reed. Well, but here's a piece, Ray, and, and this, is, this is the reality that black politicians have to confront. And that is, when you become mayor of a city, uh, you have to think broad. The struggle here is, and let's just be honest, this is, first of all, I'm, I'm highly critical of any tax dollars being used on public stadiums. I don't believe tax dollars sure. should be used to build stadiums for rich, uh, for, for, for already billionaires, especially in the NFL. So I got a fundamental problem against that. Uh, and so, but let's just be honest. If the Braves, excuse me, if the if if the if the Falcons mm -hmm. had left Atlanta, mm -hmm. the Falcons had built a stadium in the suburbs, mm -hmm. mayor still gets criticized. In fact, most folks, we talk about most politicians, if a team leaves your city, <laughs> folk, that's that's the first line in your mayor obituary. <laughs> and so it's a, so it's one of those things where if you're in the mayor's position, you're trying to drive economic development. You're trying to drive jobs, which drives development. But the other folks say, "Well, we're getting squeezed out." And so then you want to, then you want gleaming buildings and towers, and you want a revitalized downtown. But then folks say gentrification, and so you have to strike a balance here. I mean, right now, Sylvester Turner in Houston, mm. he wants to deal with, uh, with uh, uh, you know, low income and affordable housing. But then you got some black politicians who are saying, "Look." We just can't have low-income housing in our neighborhoods. We need development. And so you have a, it, 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 it's a dance you have to do. For the viewers who are watching early segments, they saw you talk about Alabama and talk about the Democratic Party not investing in black women when black women are there time and time again for them. Mayor Reed and other black elected officials have to determine who are they going to be loyal to. The people that put them in office oftentimes are these African Americans, women, and the communities that are the least of these. What's interesting that you mentioned when you talk about inequality is that Emory University professors have been highly critical of Mary Norwood and she tries to bring this coalition, this absent race, she doesn't talk about class inequality. She doesn't talk about racial inequality. So when Keisha Lance Bottoms at least acknowledges the South Side and says, wait a minute, That's we true. have progression, That's but true. we have not included everyone, That's those true. folks are like, finally, someone is speaking to us. So what the mayors right. and black elected officials have to do is identify who is loyal to them and then be loyal to those people. Well, let me also say this, because I want to deal with this uh, for about 90 seconds, and i got to go to my next guest, uh, and that is this here. After the election of Trump, we had Bob Johnson on here, and he, we were talking about, you know, black interests, and he was talking about working with Trump. 
which that ain't gonna happen. Um, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. I mean, right, it's just right. be, I mean, yeah, yeah, sure. Derek, he don't even know your name. <laughs> that's that, okay. That, let's just be honest. No, no, no it's not okay. It is okay. He, he know two black people. <laughs> Omar Rose and Paris Denard. That's it. Uh, but but sure but, he knows but, but 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 he, but, he, but here's the thing here. That, that African Americans are going to have to come to grips with. We saw it in Alabama when Rose Sanders was talking, Rose Sanders, we heard it when Dewana was talking, and that is we are going to have to fund our politics. That's right. In these local races, we are going to have to have a revitalization of black turn, black turnout organizations. Organizations that are that, that are not about that are not about Okay, we're supporting X candidate, but driving turnout because that's your power. It makes no sense for us to talk about, talk about 17% turnout None. and 23% turnout. That's how you win. Stacey Abrams is trying to become governor of uh, Democratic nominee for governor of, Virginia, uh, of, of, of Georgia. That's right. You got to turn out. No, you have to turn to win. out. Mm -hmm. There is no excuse. You've been saying this over and over. There's no excuse for not voting. Forget your politics. But you got. You. To vote. vote. And Mary Norwood, last night she said, we're going to wait for these absentee ballots, we're going to wait for the military vote. Anytime you put a vote within 40 votes, you got you vote. counting on you the fact vote. that there aren't 50 white Marines somewhere stationed. I mean, you can't right. do that. You, you got have to vote. to vote. You're right. You got to vote. Simple as that. And again, for the people sitting out there who say voting do doesn't matter, okay, but when count. it's time for you to complain about you wanting something, you going to a politician. So every vote does indeed matter. I agree. So stop sitting your behind at home and stop complaining and understand that voting is one process and then after the election, it's the beginning of another process. Right. Uh, but I, I, I don't understand uh, folks who just say, look, uh, I'm not going to vote. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to Ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no! That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got a fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.